thanks to everyone attending this webinar. Uh, title Learn How MySQL 5.6 Makes Query Optimization Easier. My name is Jaime and I'm the MySQL European Trainer for Percona. And I will talk today about several improvements of uh, MySQL 5.6. Peter Sisev, our CEO, delivered a presentation last week um, with uh, an overview of the 5.6 new features. And I really uh, recommend you to, to watch it. Today, however, I will focus specifically about uh, query optimization. What are the new features that we will find uh, on, on 5.6 and some of the built-in tools. So let's go. So as I just said, the idea for today is uh, helping you uh, on uh, how to run your queries faster in 5.6. Um, I will not talk about other features that uh, have been added or, or improved that actually can make your whole database run faster or with uh, more load, uh, better concurrency. Um, uh, for example, some of these uh, uh, optimizations are uh, the addition of or, or improvement of the performance schema debugging tool or many of the InnoDB uh, improvements. Uh, today we will focus on optimizer changes. Okay, that means uh, changes at SQL level, not at engine level. Uh, and we will try to do it from a very technical and practical way. Uh, we will avoid long theoretical explanations uh, of the why. And we will just show uh, example queries on uh, more or less real data uh, and not just laboratory prepared test cases. Um, so the first thing you must understand is that this is uh, or these those are not uh, benchmarks. Okay, these uh, what we are going to see are just examples to get better understanding of how uh, or why these features work and how they work. Um, the actual final improvement will depend on many factors. Um, things like what is your data set, your original, original uh, data set, the distribution, uh, the available memory, your buffer pool, the speed of your disks, etc. Uh, and of course, what are the actual queries you, that you are running? Um, uh, you must understand that uh, in some Cases, not all of them. Uh, we this this new improvements will provide us with better response time, and that's the only thing we are interested in for today. But uh, they may have also an impact on uh, uh, needing extra resources like extra CPU time, memory, uh, uh, more locking. I won't test. Uh, I will not test that uh, today. Uh, another thing I won't test is um, Percona Server 5.6 or MariaDB 5.5 or MariaDB 10, but uh, expect in in some cases very similar results. Um, also, you must be careful about the results I get because in 5.6.10, uh, which is the first generally available release, uh, there's probably a lot of room for improvement. Okay. Um, sometimes the query optimizer is very uh, um, conservative about using some of these features and I expect this behavior to change uh, for future releases. Uh, also some of these features are not as well documented as, as one would expect. Um, so sometimes having a look at the developer blogs or um, our MySQL performance blog, uh, they are better resources. Uh, and I actually plan to report some bugs on, on this uh, documentation uh, uh, missing parts. So this is the agenda for today. It will be divided on two parts. The first one will be longer. Uh, and we will discuss about all these features uh, and all these uh, acronyms uh, that we should be all uh, uh, getting accustomed to, like ICP, MRR, uh, BKA. And on the last part of this webinar today, 
we'll have a look at uh, some other improvements, uh, not about the query optimizer, but uh, that will that they will allow us to uh, profile what the query optimizer is doing, or some extra features that can make uh, um, easier to work with with uh, the 5.6 optimizer. Um, this is the test platform I use for for my queries. I use official uh, MySQL Oracle binaries, uh, in in particular 5.530. Uh, versus uh, 5.610, uh, which were the last uh, releases, the latest releases at the time these uh, these slides were created. And this is our base platform, a dedicated Linux box um, with plenty of RAM. Although I will talk about the buffer pool later, uh, and not a very good. Um, disk storage not very fast but that's actually good enough for for our test because in in for some of the cases we need to we actually need uh, uh, the disk to be slow uh, or the disk to be the bottleneck uh, to get advantage of these uh, uh, new improvements uh, i use more or less standard options okay no default what do i call standard options um, I changed the buffer pool to a bigger one, 5 gigabytes, a uh, bigger transaction log, uh, although it shouldn't uh, matter for, for the test as most of them will be select. Um, and for most of the cases I, I disable the performance schema. Uh, I will tell you uh, why in, in uh, afterwards. Um, you must also understand that even if this wasn't a benchmark, I executed the query several times and several, time, several times between reboots, uh, so that uh, I was sure that there was nothing affecting um, the, the, the execution of the queries and that I have consistent results uh, between reboots. Uh, and I executed alternatively the 5.6 queries, the 5.5 queries, the 5.5 queries in 5.6 with the feature disabled. Okay. Uh, and I then use an average, I use uh, other central values, uh, the uh, median, but uh, well, that's, um, that's, that's uh, enough to know that they are stable or not, uh, results. Um, I will be using force index. This is not a good practice, but this is because of two reasons. The first one is um, that I wanted to be sure that the same query plan was used uh, both in 5.5 and 5.6, uh, as they have very different query planners. This may change sometimes. And also because, uh, as I said before, uh, 5.6 tends to be very conservative for now about the new features. And sometimes I had to force uh, the usage of these new features. This is the uh, schema I use. This is a movie database. Um, the cast info table was the bigger one with 20 uh, million rows. The others had more or less or between uh, 1 million and a half and 9 million rows. Uh, they were in ODB tables. Okay. Because uh, in many cases, InnoDB is going to be the, the engine that is going to get better performance uh, for, for these improvements. Although uh, in most cases, my ISAM can also uh, get uh, better execution time. And we will start with all the indexes, except for primary keys, but we will create them as, as we need. Um, so let's start with those examples of new features of the 5.6 optimizer. Uh, the first one we are going to talk about is a very easy one, but very effective. Uh, faster execution of queries using uh, file sort, uh, but with a short limit. In queries like this one, uh, explain, uh, well, select everything from movie info, order by info, limit 100. 
um, we want to order by a column that is not indexed. Uh, actually, there are no indexes at all to speed up this, this query because it, it returns all results. Um, so in this case, both in 5.5 and 5.6, uh, last step of reordering the results uh, before sending back to the client uh, is, is needed. In 5.5, that means ordering all records and then discarding those not within the bounds of the limit. In 5.6, this, this process has been uh, optimized. Uh, when the limit is much uh, smaller than the 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 total number of, of records uh, um, uh, originally selected. In that case, um, instead of using uh, the quick sort algorithm, which is what uh, it is typically used uh, for for uh, the using file sort uh, strategy, um, which is just using um, uh, a buffer on memory for sorting uh, in 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 batches, and that will uh, require um, uh, temporary tables on disk if uh, the 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 memory uh, valuable is not enough for the whole reordering process. Instead of doing that, uh, a priority queue is used, uh, actually making the algorithm of uh, reordering much. Uh, more effective. Why? Because with a single uh, data scan, it just obtains the first 100 records. It doesn't have to uh, uh, reorder all the records. Um, so in this particular case, uh, what are the practical results? What are the execution time? Uh, well, um, in in this case where I just want the first 100 records. Um, uh, and with the default short buffer size, it takes in 5.5 uh, a total uh, time of 20 seconds. The same query in 5.6 takes less than 10 seconds. And that's with the default uh, parameter or uh, the performance schema uh, enabled. If we disable that, remember that in 5.5 it is disabled by default, we get a slightly better performance, uh, an execution of eight, 8 seconds and a half. So we are making the execution uh, around 2 times faster. Of course, the exact speed up will depend on the buffer pool contents and uh, what's the, the original short buffer size in 5.5. In uh, but the final results will not depend on, on the sort buffer size. Um, as I have noticed more or less uh, an overhead between 5 and 10 percent of in, uh, when a performance schema is enabled, I will run the following tests uh, uh, with performance schema uh, disabled by, uh, by default. So next case, index condition pushdown or ICP. Um, the idea of ICP is moving some of the filtering operation uh, down to the storage level, um, avoiding extra handler call. If the condition we push is very selective, we can get a great speed up for, for our query. So in, in this particular example, what I have done is uh, creating a compound index on the cast info table um, uh, with the role ID um, column and the note column. And please note that I had to convert the original uh, data type from uh, text to barcode. Um, I will talk about that uh, at the end why I did. The, the select I want to execute is, is there uh, below. Um, select everything from cast info where role ID equals one and note like uh, Jamie between uh, those wildcards. Um,
if you think uh, about how we could use our index um, to make this query faster, you may think that uh, using a compound index here is, is nonsense because the only the first column of the index is going to be used. The roll ID equals one can be checked uh, with the first column of uh, of the our index, but note cannot be used. And actually, if you are using 5.5, you will be completely right. If you have a look at the explain output, only the first four bytes, you can see that on the key length column, only the first four bytes of the index are being used, meaning that only the first column uh, is being used. Uh, so if we change the index to only uh, index the row ID column, we will get uh, the exact same uh, result. Um, if you have a look at the handler status variables, you can see that uh, a lot of handler calls have to be done, 8 million calls, just to retrieve um, uh, a result set of 266 rows. So what's difference in what's the, the difference in 5.6? If we did the same thing in in 5.6 with ICP enabled, uh, which is enabled by default, um, explain actually show us a very very similar result. Uh, the only change is the extra optimization Unix in using index condition. Um, this is how MySQL tells us that it is using ICP. But uh, we don't have more information. Um, that's why I, I always tell my students to have a look at the handler statistics. In this case, the number of handler read next uh, uh, variable, status variable has been greatly reduced to 266, which is uh, exactly the, 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 the actual number of rows being uh, returned. Why? Because we have actually executed or checked the uh, node like Jamie condition at engine level. Okay. Um, but the idea is well, I get uh, a lower number of handler calls, but the, 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 the condition has to still be checked. Doesn't matter if it is at SQL level or Handler level. Is it really an optimization? Do we get better numbers at like better execution time? For this particular case, the answer is a clear yes. Um, if there's a lot of filtering that it is done at engine level, uh, we will get a really good uh, performance. In our case, for example, we go from uh, almost six seconds to uh, just over one second of execution time, five times faster. Um, so in this case, uh, ICP is a really good optimization. Uh, I told you before that I had to change the text column uh, node uh, into a, a bar car. Um, the idea of this is because in order for this to be useful, the whole column have to be indexed. Um, it, it has the same limitation as uh, using index optimization. We need to have the whole contents of the column for this optimization to be useful. Um, and just as uh, curiosity, um, it is impossible just now uh, to get advantage of both the ICP and use index, index uh, optimization. Um, if we change the select star into a select node, uh, using index is preferred. And, and this, in this particular case, uh, it's, it's funny because um, the query execution ends up being uh, slower. Um, I think ICP will change the way we index our tables. Um, traditionally, for example, uh, multiple column index uh, will be only good um, uh, uh, as uh, or as good as a simple column index um, uh, with two range conditions. Why? Because if we have two range conditions, okay, um, only one can actually be 
it use for for uh, or apply to the index with index condition push down as the second condition cannot be directly uh, used but it can be pushed down to the engine in some cases uh, this can uh, uh, be a, an optimization and we can use the whole index for uh, checking the uh, the condition whether if this is actually an improvement in execution time or um, it, it takes more time will depend on how selective the, the second part of the index the one that it is pushed down uh, is so um, you must be uh, careful with, with that Tests. Um, we will reduce the original buffer pool size. Remember that originally this was uh, uh, set to five gigabytes to one hundred mega megabytes. The idea is to make sure that the database uh, contents do not fill uh, into memory. And this is needed because some of the examples we are going to see uh, actually assume that we actually have to uh, access the, uh, directly to uh, uh, records on disk and uh, they are more efficient in, in those cases okay so uh, the first of these optimizations uh, based on uh, different strategy on how uh, they uh, we access to, to the disk is called multi range grid uh, or MRR uh, um, when using a secondary index of a table for filtering, uh, the idea is that instead of just asking for the rows in, as as we got the the secondary key uh, result, we try to first reorder in uh, uh, in the in the more in, the, in a way that it is more uh, interesting. Uh, from the point of view of accessing the disk in a more sequential way. So, for example, in the case of InnoDB, that usually means uh, accessing um, uh, the rows in primary key order. Okay, as or as uh, InnoDB uses cluster index, uh, those uh, the the rows are organized around the an order in the primary key uh, order. Um, so uh, if we are using a traditional spinning disk, uh, ac accessing those rows in an order way uh, will provide better performance. Of course, always depending on what's the actual buffer content, what's the data distribution, selectivity, uh, and other parameters. Um, of course, this won't be true. Uh, on in the case of SSD disk, uh, the reason for that is that uh, in SSD disk, random access is as fast uh, as sequential access, and things like the InnoDB read ahead uh, optimization um, is actually discouraged to to be used for for those cases because you will not get uh, any real advantage. Um, of course, this is not compatible with using index because the idea is uh, getting an optimization whenever uh, we are accessing the real rows and uh, the cover index technique uh, just uses indexes to retrieve uh, uh, the, the uh, needed information. Um, and this uh, strategy is limited uh, for range access type and equi join. So this is uh, uh, these are the examples. We'll first focus on the first one, uh, simplest one. Select on cast info and just uh, doing a range uh, condition on person role ID. Um, to get an advantage of this strategy, we are going to uh, add an index on person role ID. We'll talk about the second. Uh, example later. So, what are the differences in execution? Um, 
in 5.5 without MRR, uh, we get a very uh, traditional output in, in explain. We get a range type, uh, but in this particular case, a lot of handler calls have to be done to the index, uh, handler uh, read next. Um, and actually, this is so uh, not uh, very uh, not optimized or not uh, not not very optimal. And uh, in this particular case, we I actually had to use force index because full table scan is actually faster. Um, if we compare to uh, the results in 5.6. Um, again, forcing the usage of personal role ID, uh, we get uh, uh, some additional uh, information. Um, the first uh, is uh, that, of course, well, we are using now MRR in the extra column, um, but also it gets uh, the advantage of the index uh, condition pushdown. The number of handler um uh calls have changed but this was something expected because we now have a different strategy for accessing data one that is more complex uh because we have to actually sort our records before uh sending them back to 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 the user or before checking uh, the primary key also please note the uh, handler mrr in it which in uh, it happened to me that in some cases uh, it, it is not updated. I don't know exactly the cause of this uh, because uh, on the manual is not very uh, documented, uh, which is um, um, the 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 meaning of uh, handler MRR in it, but. Um, the truth is that if I disable this uh, uh, feature in 5.6, uh, I got worse results than if I enable it. So I actually was getting advantage of, of the MRR, but uh, it wasn't shown on the handler. So in the end, is this a good or a bad strategy? Uh, for this example, uh, example, um, I get uh, an improvement in 33 uh, by or uh, uh, the, the execution time is 33% uh, better than uh, without using MRR. So I get an execution time of one minute five seconds in 5.5. In 5.6, uh, with MRR activated. And without ICP, so I make sure that ICP is not responsible for for that advantage. Uh, I get uh, 20, sorry 48, 49 seconds. This work this was consistent uh, uh, between executions. I got more or less the the same numbers. Uh, but I must say that it was uh, difficult to see for smaller uh, result set. So why is what is the reason behind this, this improvement? Actually, the handlers do not give us enough information of uh, why we get this execution uh, time or why the execution time is better. Um, for that, we have to have a look at the InnoDB counters before and after the execution. And I consistently have 15% uh, of more read aheads, which in turn, results in a 40% of uh, less data reads. Um, that 40%, uh, and I'm supposing with the extra overhead of having to reorder the temporary results, uh, uh, is, is going to be probably responsible for this 33% improvement in execution time. Um, I just leave you as uh, homework for you. Uh, to try to tune uh, the, the the execution time of of this uh, strategy because uh, you can control the buffer size uh, or the read random buffer size uh, which is used for the reordering steps. 
okay so this could be better or worse uh, depending on that value so um if i had better results with a full table scan what's the point of, of, of using force index because i'm actually uh, making the the execution time worse well um of course the the reason is for demonstration purposes okay um but i must say that some features are not either properly detected or I must say MySQL 5.6 is very conservative about using them. Um, for example, in the second uh, uh, example query that I showed you before, this is very similar to the previous example, but I added uh, an extra condition on role ID and I tried to use a very bad index uh, like person role ID and role ID, the sensible index to be, to to use in this case would be uh, a compound index on role ID and person role ID in that order. Um, if I actually use this this bad option, the full table scan is still preferred by default both in 5.5 and 5.6. Um, if I force the use usage of the index in 5.5 i get uh, 1 minute and 16 seconds of execution time but thanks to icp uh, which is not chosen um uh, i get uh, an almost instant execution time under one uh, second uh, and again this is because uh, uh, in this particular case, ICP is not a chosen uh, strategy, so we have to force the use of, of that index. Um, a very um, um, another strategy, uh, batch key access or BKA, um, is actually related to the MRR because it uses MRR when when executed. Um, the idea of PKA is that we introduce a, uh, an additional join strategy okay, that can substitute the standard uh, execution of a nested loop join. How? Because what we do is retrieve indexes in batches and reordering them using the same MRR strategy that I showed you before. Um, this is one of the uh, strategies that are not enabled uh, by default. Uh, so MySQL is quite conservative about using them. So in, even if I just uh, enable the batch key access, I actually also have to uh, force the MRR usage to take advantage of, of it. I suppose that in future versions, uh, uh, MySQL optimizer uh, will be uh, less conservative and uh, we could get advantage of, of these uh, optimizations by, by default. Um, as you will see later, there are no many changes in explain output uh, for this particular query. Uh, a join on cast info and card name uh, by some particular value. And then a range scan on uh, uh, casting. Um, so um, this is a very expected uh, result in in 5.5 without no uh, extra optimization. And this is the handler execution again, very typical result for uh, uh, the nested loop strategy. A lot of uh, handler read e. Uh, but in 5.6 things change, uh, at least slightly. The biggest change is, of course, that on the second row, the access to cast info, uh, we get this extra uh, uh, using join buffer batch key access. This is how MySQL tells us that it's using this uh, strategy. Um, we get different handler results. Okay. Um, as usual, 
uh, we are using MRR, the handlers, uh, the, the number of calls is, is different. But again, the idea is, uh, is this an improvement or, or in, in, in execution time? Uh, the handlers are not enough to, to have a look at, at that. And um, this is the numbers I get. Um, I get consistent again. Um, in this case, six seconds better uh, of execution time in 5.6 than in 5.5. Um, the results are better, but the gain is not too big. Um, however, uh, in this particular case, what would it happen if we change the join buffer size? Remember that the, the, the idea of this strategy is to access um, the rows in a, in a batch way and retrieve several uh, rows, several rows, uh, 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 row, uh, indexes, uh, uh, values at the same time. And this a join buffer size is going to control how many of these uh, operations are done at the same time. If we put this to a larger value, for example, 50 megabytes, okay, be careful with that because this is a session uh, variable, so 50 megabytes may be too large in, in some environment. Uh, the execution time actually drops uh, dramatically. We get uh, 19 and a half seconds of execution time. Okay, so uh, again, this join buffer size uh, variable uh, has a uh, dramatic impact on the actual uh, performance uh, um, improvement in, of, of BKA. Um, um, again, I leave you as an exercise to check what. Uh, would be a good value uh, for your particular setup, uh, considering the memory, the extra memory issue. That's one thing. Changing the join buffer size in the original query wouldn't impact the the results because the join buffer is not used in the original query. Other improvements that we are going to find in, in 5.6 uh, are, for example, the better index merge. Um, index merge has been traditionally something that created, uh, or not bad performance, but uh, it wasn't very effective in, in many cases. Sometimes, or in many cases, actually, uh, the usage of two indexes in parallel actually provided worse for a time. So in many cases, we had to either disable this functionality or rewrite uh, the queries as uh, union. I must say that not all issues have been resolved, uh, but uh, in some specific cases, uh, queries can get uh, a better or can uh, do a better usage of um, the index merge uh, uh, optimization. Uh, using meaning using two indexes uh, at the same time. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, for this particular query, uh, select uh, or count uh, how many titles uh, or how many films uh, inside this title uh, table have a title in the the piece pilot or production year is. Uh, larger than 2001, sorry, 2010. Um, uh, and at the same time, the candidate is lower than 4. I must say that uh, for this particular query, most uh, titles, most uh, uh, films uh, really uh, uh, make this candidate kind of lower than 4 uh, true. So it doesn't filter out uh, much uh, or many records. Not very selective. Uh, we have created two indexes, uh, one on title and another one on production year. And uh, in in 5.5, if we run explain on this uh, query, 
uh, this is the the ones the the results you can see are for 5.6. If we run this very same explain in 5.5, uh, the chosen strategy would be a full table scan. However, in 5.6, uh, this kind ID uh, not being very selective is uh, actually detected, and the merge algorithm can be used efficiently um, on title and production year. So you have there at the, the bottom the results. Um, in 5.5, we get uh, less than one. Uh, second of execution time um, uh, for this full full scan, mainly because it will be uh, most of it uh, will probably fit in in memory. While uh, using indexes is almost immediate, one hundred of a second. Um, another optimization we can find in five point six is uh, getting a better advantage of the hidden primary key inside the secondary keys in InnoDB. In for 5.6, um, uh, secondary indexes, um, uh, well, both in 5.6 and 5.5, uh, secondary indexes uh, store the value of the primary key. Okay? Um, in, uh, but before 5.6, in 5.5 and older, um, we could only uh, get uh, advantage of that hidden value, that implicit primary key value inside secondary keys, uh, uh, just in cases like, for example, for covering index or for sorting uh, records. Uh, we could not access those primary key values for filtering. However, in 5.6, we can also use it for filtering thanks to the ICP optimization. So let's have a look at uh, this example. Um, we are going to create an index on the first 25 characters of the title column, and we want to execute the query select uh, count from title, where title equals pilot, and ID between these two values. In earlier versions, uh, you could only use the index uh, on title for filtering on the first condition. However, in 5.6, um, as you can see on the explain output for, for 5.6, we get a very different uh, scenario. If you have a look at the key length uh, column of explain, we get uh, the, the value 81. Where does this 81 value come from? This is uh, 25. The length of the uh, of the index multiply by three. This is the number of bytes, the maximum number of bytes per character in in uh, default MySQL uh, or traditional MySQL implementation of UTF-8 uh, plus two extra bytes for the length. That makes 77. Uh, but in 5.6, four more bytes are added. Because we can also use that uh, uh, implicit uh, primary key inside the secondary key. So we get a total of 81 bytes available for our filtering, which means we are using both uh, uh, the title column and the primary key, uh, sorry, the primary key, uh, yes, the primary key column uh, inside uh, the title index. Uh, for for filtering, okay. Uh, probably in this case, the difference in speed won't be great, okay. But um, it can help us to avoid duplicate keys uh, that were only created because we could not use uh, that uh, internal uh, primary key index value. And of course, less indexes means um, less potentially uh, less memory usage and better write speed. Um, in the case of joins as our queries, there have been a lot of changes uh, that affect performance. Um, but I must say that because of the limitations of time in, in this webinar, I'm not going to be able to uh, talk about them all I would like to. Uh, but maybe on a webinar, 
or uh, on on my school performance posts, uh, we could talk about them. Uh, just uh, send me your comments with uh, if you you will be interested in it. Uh, let me, however, highlight some of the um, uh, of, of of the optimizations that we got in 5.6. The first and I think uh, more important is lazy subquery materialization. Um, when a subquery is found uh, that usually is not non-dependent uh, or independent, um, uh, in, in up to 5.5, .5, it was executed right away. Um, uh, even on explain execution, uh, subqueries had to actually be uh, executed. This behavior now has changed. And the execution is delayed, that's why it's called lazy uh, materialization, uh, until uh, maybe some uh, added conditions uh, uh, are applied. So if some extra conditions are applied that filter out some of the original results, we can merge uh, the, the conditions of the subquery and the author select and get in many cases, uh, better uh, performance. Another optimization is uh, the, the detection of non-dependent subqueries in the case of using a, an uh, in plus a, a no, plus a subquery. Um, in earlier versions, uh, the result of this was a query that um, uh, actually was shown as having a dependent subquery, even if it was clear that it, it wasn't. Uh, the traditional fix for that was converting the subquery into a join uh, so that the optimizer wasn't confused. Well, uh, in, in many cases, this has already been fixed, and you can expect similar performance than uh, in a join. Um, another Optimization you will get regarding uh, uh, or in relation to to joins uh, is the um, uh, better execution time. Uh, actually, not execution time uh, of of the of the joins, but of the algorithm that orders the tables um, before actually doing the the joins. Um, the idea is that MySQL always tries to put the tables in the best order uh, he uh, sorry it, it, it thinks that uh, is going to uh, read less rows however the the previous ordering algorithm was very limited um, and we ended up with the best effort and in some cases this was not very satisfactory uh, the new query planner uses a smarter algorithm uh, more efficient, um, providing better ordering in less time. So in many cases, we will end up with a better query plan. Okay. Uh, remember that uh, time spent on 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 this kind of operations is always tunable in 5.5 or 5.6 with the optimizer uh, search depth uh, variable. Uh, so you can still uh, tune that. On the last part of this webinar, we will analyze what are some of the improvements, tools, um, configurations that can, can help us to know what is happening at, at the optimizer level, and also some of the features that can help us to make uh, query optimization easier. Um, if you are used to uh, use explain, uh, you will find some some uh, quite some nice additions. Uh, the first and quite easy to understand uh, is the addition of uh, uh, explain uh, that can now work with DML statements, uh, which means uh, deletes, inserts, and updates. In 5.6, uh, we had to convert those uh, into uh, its equivalent select before running explain, and in some cases that wasn't trivial. Um, um, for example, uh, if we had a delete uh, combined with a join. In this example, uh, 
you can see uh, uh, that, for example, this this delete is using an index on title um, uh, to uh, to check that the condition is true uh, and is is doing it in a, a performant way. Uh, remember that on explain the same as with select. Uh, the query is not really executed, so no records are actually deleted. Um, the second and probably nicest addition to explain is the ability to show a, an extended or structured output uh, in JSON format. Uh, to use it, you just have to add the format equal to JSON after explain, and we'll have a more traditional uh, Tree based information uh, as it is shown in other database servers. Uh, it basically contains the same information than a typical display. Um, uh, so uh, the, the table name, uh, the, the type, the, the keys, uh, possible keys, keys, etc. Uh, remember that the filter uh, condition at the bottom is something that we could already uh, get. Uh, with the explain extended um, a version of, of explain, but we have an extra property which is uh, attached condition, and this is interesting because we can see what the index is being used for, um, and that's uh, in some days was very clear. In some other cases, again, if we have uh, some complex joins, uh, this this wasn't uh, as clear. Um, JSON output can be probably interesting for those developing third party uh, applications and plotting that in a much more automatic or automatic way. Um, another addition to the profiler is the ability to trace uh, its, its uh, process. Um, with explain, up to now what we got was the final decision. But we didn't know anything about what other options uh, about query execution uh, were uh, considered and why they were discarded. Okay, now we can profile that. Um, um, what information that we can get is uh, what w those strategies were, what was its cost, um, and some other things we will see on on the example. Um, the information will be stored on the optimizer trace uh, table in information schema, uh, but has to be enabled. It is it is off by default. Um, this is an example on how to do that. Uh, we have to change the optimizer trace value uh, to to enable. And uh, for example, if we execute this query, I just show uh, just show uh, uh, some some slides ago. Um, after that, as, after a successful execution, we just query information schema uh, optimizer trace, and we will get something uh, similar to that. Actually, the output will be uh, much longer generally. Uh, this is just a small piece, um, but we c it can provide us uh, with with uh, an idea of what are the information that we have available. Um, alternative query plans, index usage, um, the minor steps inside each strategy, uh, whether if MRR is considered and used, uh, what's the cost for every. Um, uh, for every single step, and what was the chosen strategy? Um, this can be helpful, for example, if we notice some strange behaviors about the query optimizer, and if we are not satisfied with the final optimizer plan, we can try to rewrite the query, um, enable or disable uh, some of these new features in the optimizer switch uh, variable, or maybe just uh, Trying to update the statistics to get the final uh, result. Um, in in ODB uh, uh, versions in Cloudy five point five and lower, the table statistics or index statistics um, 
were first generated when the table was open. Um, I mean, uh, open for the first time at server level. Um, this created a problem. Uh, first one is that uh, if you uh, you had to shut down or uh, restart MySQL, those statistics were uh, uh, lost and they had to be recomputed, uh, making in some cases with, if you use many tables, um, uh, the make the, the the startup process a bit uh, slower. Uh, not not sh usually sh it, it shouldn't be a very big issue, but uh, uh, it's something that you 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 it may impact you in uh, some uh, very critical cases. And um, also, you have the possibility of getting a bad query plan because uh, the random pages that were sampled were not a really good. Uh, um, sample of the actual pages. So now, and by default, uh, with controlled by the InnoDB stats persist on variable, the InnoDB table statistics persist on reboot, uh, and that will make those statistics, those statistics, uh, more stable. Um, remember that now the, the show commands and the, uh, access to information schema does not uh, 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 automatically regenerate the statistics by default. Okay, uh, of course you can change that behavior, but probably the best way to do that is with the typical analyze uh, table. And one hidden thing that I ran into while preparing this webinar was uh, this warning. Uh, before 5.6, you could create as many duplicate keys as you wanted. Uh, without any error, warning, any uh, uh, notice. Um, uh, if a new name was provided, and that was something that if you didn't uh, ex explicit uh, any number, a new name was automatically created for you. So um, starting with 5.6, uh, a warning seems to be generated, and it says that in the future, uh, this this uh, will be duplicated. So to finish, just some general thoughts. Um, Five point six is, and I'm speaking for myself. Uh, I think it is a great release. Uh, even if we only have into consideration the the optimizer improvements to get advantage of them. Uh, however, um, even in some cases, upgrading is just enough and they are transparent for the user. In some other cases, we'll have to actually tune manually, uh, tune our queries, tune our schema um, to, to actually get that uh, performance improvement. Um, uh, some of the old tricks and tuning studies that we have used for a long time in 5.5 and older um, are no longer needed and we can actually use uh, things in a more sane way um, uh, so we won't need some special tricks uh, to, 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 to get some workarounds uh, and in other cases we'll need a different approach for example uh, ICP and indexing um, remember that tools like PT Upgrade or Percona Playback, these are free and open source tools uh, made by Percona, uh, can be a great help uh, for checking these new improvements and regressions and, and after all being prepared for, for an eventual migration. So uh, this has been a very concentrated summary about the optimizer changes in 5.6 uh, work. Where can I learn more about them? Um, I would say that I'm quite proud of our training courses. Uh, in one of them, we are focused on query optimization, and we have a detailed look at all the strategies that we can use to uh, get better MySQL performance by adding indexes, rewriting queries, changing the database uh, schema, 
um, uh, changing the, the 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 architecture of, of our application. I highly recommend it. Uh, the next sessions that we are running are in Chicago and London, both in uh, on April the eighth. Uh, I actually uh, deliver the the London one, and you have there the uh, the the coupon code uh, W15, and with it you can get a 15 discount uh, for any April course. Also, stay tuned for our 5.6 course that will uh, start to be uh, delivered in, in May. And of course, expect more news, expert advice, articles, information in our team blog, uh, My School Performance blog. So, uh, and of course, if you want to attend a, a really great event, my school events and meet uh, the experts in person. You can come to the Performa, uh, sorry, Percona uh, Live Conference and Expo. Um, all the big My School players will be there, not only uh, uh, the people from Percona. And you will be there and you could share your experiences, do networking. Um, it will be held in uh, April. Uh, 22nd of uh, 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 in Santa Clara, California. So uh, and of course, uh, have a look. We also have a discount for you uh, people that attended this webinar. If you use the per webinar one, you will get a 15% of discount. If you want more information, just check uh, the link uh, at, at below the, the slide. So thank you all for attending this webinar. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not open for any questions you want to do. Um, and that's all. Thank you very much.